Hello everyone, Jeff the Green Review here. Are worms good for your garden? Many people will tell you yes, but I'm not so sure. On the plus side, worms help create pore spaces that allow water and air into the soil. The pores allow air to flow into the soil that the roots need, of course. The pores also allow water to travel more freely and more deeply than if the pores were made from an aeration machine. But worms create pores at the expense of soil organic matter. This is a big negative against worms. They can consume so much organic matter that other beneficial organisms can't survive. The bumps in many lawns are made out of worm castings, poop. Most of the time, the castings are small piles that are not a problem, but they can be large enough to make walking in a lawn uncomfortable. We picture lawns as a place you can go barefoot and play a game of croquet with the balls rolling smoothly across the grass. But a worm casting problem can ruin these ideas pretty fast. People often say that worms are good for your lawn without describing what kind of worms they're talking about. There are over 4,000 species of worms worldwide. They're divided into three categories for our purpose. The epigeic worms live near or on the soil surface, consume a lot of organic matter, especially in the duff layer in the forest floor. They're used in worm compost bins and don't make large worm castings on lawns. The endogeic worms burrow horizontally in the top foot or so of soil, consume more mineral materials, and don't make large castings on lawns. The nethic worms are large worms that can burrow deeply into the soil, can pull leaves down into their burrows, and do make castings on the lawn. Depending on which worms you're talking about, these may be benefits to your lawn. But the benefits may not outweigh the problems. A closer look at these benefits shows that tunnels are only a benefit if the soil is rather poor to begin with, and air and water have a hard time moving within it. Good topsoil with lots of organic matter will be able to allow air and water to move and not need worms. A wide variety of other animals and microbes consume organic matter and release chemicals that plants can use. Worms are not necessary for this breakdown of organic matter into chemicals in a soil. Is the worm poop beneficial? Maybe. You'll read everywhere that it is made of concentrated nutrients and that it makes an excellent organic fertilizer. I looked at the label of a bag that said it was pure worm castings. It also said in the nutrient label on the package that it has a 1-0-0 fertilizer ratio. That means the pure castings of the bag are only 1% nitrogen, have no phosphorus or potassium. The label did not list any other micronutrients. That's not a concentrated or excellent organic fertilizer. I've read reports of worm castings having a 5-5-3 fertilizer ratio, but many organic fertilizers are in the same range. If you live in the middle of North America in an area that was once covered in glaciers, you're in an area that has no native worms. They did not survive living under glaciers. Those areas were eventually covered in prairies and forests that grew successfully without worms. Worms are not necessary for a healthy landscape unless you have a really bad topsoil that the worms might be able to tunnel into and add some holes that might you know, get some air and water down into deeper in the soil. Adding compost full of microorganisms to the soil and doing core aerations on a regular basis will work as well or better than worms. In natural forest areas, worms damage the organic forest soil by consuming fallen leaf material on the forest floor. Fishing worms have been banned in some states so that they can't be released into the surrounding forests when fishermen are done fishing. Worms in a lawn or flower bed also consume organic matter that would make the soil better. They slowly turn a healthy soil with lots of organic matter into a poor soil covered in worm poop. At the same time, if your soil has so little organic matter that worms can sur can't survive, it's a poor soil that needs compost. A dry and sandy desert soil has few worms because it has so little organic matter. But that's okay. There are plenty of plants that prefer that kind of soil. Worms become a problem in a lawn when there are too many large castings. This usually occurs in the spring when the soil is waterlogged. This is also the time of year that worms mate and are near the surface. They leave a lot more castings on the surface than at other times during the year. Another problem with wor too many worms in the lawn is that they attract moles. These mammals consume worms and they will spend a lot of time in a lawn with worms and very little time burrowing under a lawn with few worms. How do you get rid of worms in a lawn? 
As far as I know, there are no products currently available to get rid of worms. In the past, some products for killing insects or for fertilizing a lawn have had the side effect of killing worms and other organisms in the soil, but they have been replaced with products that are more eco-friendly. You might find a product that says that it could harm the worm population, but it would be illegal and contrary to label directions to use that product in that way. It might be helpful to keep the lawn drier than the worms prefer by cutting back on any irrigation, but in the spring and fall, rains will keep the soil wet. If you can't get rid of the worms, how do you get rid of the castings? A roller will smash them down, but who can roll their lawn every week to try to keep up with the worms? Eventually, you will also need to do a core aeration to reduce the compaction that the rolling creates. If the lawn is dry enough, you can rake or sweep the castings to break them and you know, kind of spread them around, but that doesn't work all that well. Another thing to look at is how well the lawn is growing. If there are lumps in the lawn, they could be the grass crown lifting up with not much soil in between them. A top dressing of topsoil and organic matter to level out the lawn may be necessary. <laughs> so what's all this mean to me? Much of the northern and middle portion of North America doesn't have native worms. Worms are invasive pests in some Midwestern forest soils, especially forest reserves. They consume all the loose, fluffy organic matter on the forest floor that many native flower and tree species need to survive. Invasive plants are more likely to survive in forest soils damaged by worms. Minnesota has declared worms to be a non-native invasive and try to prevent the spread in the worms in natural areas so they are banning them in a lot of areas. Worms are probably not beneficial on lawns, flower beds, and natural areas that do not already have compact soil. When they consume the organic matter in the soil, the soil becomes more compacted. Worms in compost piles eat a lot of the organic matter too. Worms can be pests in lawns where they leave piles of droppings, castings, that interfere with walking and playing games. And this is Jeff for The Green Review. Thanks for watching.